2018. It is 5.30 p.m. and we are in the Thomas J. Smith Council Chambers. Would you all please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Kathleen, let's do roll call. Wilson? Here. Phillips? Here. Graham Murray? McCampbell? Here. Brinker? Here. Okay. Um, I have a Mayor's Award recipient that apparently is running late tonight, so maybe we'll get to that here in a little bit. Uh, on the agenda tonight, we have uh, the consent agenda. All matters listed under item one consent agenda having been discussed are considered to be routine by the City Council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If a discussion is desired, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. On the consent tonight, we have the usual finances and miscellaneous, minutes of previous meetings, payroll and city claims, beer, liquor, wine, and cigarettes, reports, and bonds. We have six resolutions. The first is a resolution approving nuisance abatements for various properties. The second is a resolution establishing a no parking zone on the 200 block of Spring Street. Third is a resolution authorizing the filing of an application for State of Iowa Revitalize Iowa Sound Economy or RISE funds for a new roadway in the Flint Ridge Business Park. The fourth is a resolution approving contract with Southeast Iowa Regional Planning Commission for Burlington Urban Service Planning Assistance. The fifth is a resolution rescinding the sale of property locally known as 1003 Chalfont Street, City of Burlington, Iowa with conditions. And the sixth is a resolution approving membership in the Houston Galveston Area Council Cooperative Purchase Agreement. We also have some hearings set for August 20th, 2018. Uh, the first is consideration of a sale of property locally known as 311 South 9th Street, City of Burlington, Iowa, with conditions. The second is consideration of a sale of property locally known as 1906 Melvin Avenue, City of Burlington, Iowa, with conditions. The third is consideration of sale of property locally known as 1003 Chalfont Street, City of Burlington, Iowa, with conditions. The fourth is consideration of an ordinance amending ordinance number 3129, being an ordinance creating the DeWald Plaza PUD or planned unit development by making changes to section 3B land use design criteria and section 5 50 foot buffer park. The fifth is a consideration of a facility use agreement with Southeast Soccer Academy, CESA, for use of fields at the Burlington Regional Recplex. And the sixth is consideration of an ordinance amending various sections of Chapter 97, Industrial Pretreatment Requirements of the City of Burlington Municipal Code. And we also have two appointments, Mayor Pro Tem. Yes, we have for the Joint Safety Committee uh, reappointing Matt Trexel and Ryan Gorley, and also for the Riverfront Advisory Committee uh, appointing Patricia Walls. So thank you for serving. Is there anybody that would like to have any of these items removed? <coughs> Shahan, 1821 Mount Pleasant Street. Never want to let you down. Item number three under resolutions. All righty. Can I get a motion? Uh, yes, I motion to approve all items listed under item one, consent agenda, except for resolution number three. <coughs> you get a second? I second. Kathleen, let's vote. Wilson? Aye. Billups? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Rinker? Aye. Okay, resolutions. All right, here I have a resolution establishing solid waste fees. Second. second. Thank you. Sorry, I gotta remember I'm <laughs> All right, so this is a resolution uh, we've talked about in regards, in regards to establishing the uh, CART program. Uh, this would set fees effective at uh, November 1 and ongoing um, with the new CART system. Uh, it would set the fees 14.25 a month for the 35 gallon, uh, 17.50 a month, the 65 gallon, and, 90, and then the 95 gallon at 20.75 per month. Uh, what that essentially allows is a customer to uh, who does choose the the 35 gallon cart with this new program to stay at the ex existing fee for garbage service uh, has the option to do that if that's what their desire is um, also establishes fees for those customers who have a second container 
uh, under this system would be able to choose a, a second 65 gallon container for eight dollars a month at a, or a second 95 gallon at the twelve dollars a month um, this would also change the way our tag fees are done our tag fees are currently uh, at two dollars a tag this would implement a, a new tag system uh, the new tags would be at we're listing at 390 that's what we would sell it to the retailers and they would typically be selling it for four bucks each um, you also see in here uh, the cha this service charge for a change out uh, on an ongoing basis for when ex except uh, where you're having a new homeowner or renter uh, if someone's changing cart sizes there's a $35 service charge to do that as we check one in to inventory check one out and uh, delivery and, and set up of the new of the new uh, cart again our existing fees would stay in place until uh, after the new carts are delivered um, and move as we move into the new system okay so we've already been here any questions or concerns from the audience mr. Shahan number of questions I'll try and stay on topic here um, first of all I understand there's a delay in the form for choosing when what size container we're going to get what's what's the status on that uh, there was a one week delay on that uh, that those mailers will go out August next week is that right Don they were to be the uh, 13th they're going out on the 20th and then there'll be a three week time frame for folks to be able to respond they'll be able to respond to those uh, by either returning the mailer or uh, going there's be a process to register online with your cart size by address since I'm downtown a lot what office would you return that to the waterworks or somebody that can here? go to I would assume Don that that's could go to either City Hall or the water department with the with the bill or How's yeah, the mailer if set up? To the water department, they're going to give to us at the wastewater plant, but I don't know why you wouldn't just drop it with the mail. Yeah. Post, postage paid postcard. Yeah. Well, that works. Prepaid po postcard. And is is it being set up to automatically be returned to your department, Don, or? Uh, no, it, go, it will go to the um, company. RARIG. Hmm. To RARIG itself. So RARIG will collect them if they're, if they're sent that way, but otherwise, they can be dropped. I assume you could drop them off either City Hall, the Water Department, down at the, the Sewer Department, wherever they end up going to. Uh, it'll all end up ultimately going back to Rarig. And remind me again, but Don, you can also go online and do this, right? So you can go onto a website, uh, put in some type of code which will identify that address and that mailer, and then you can choose your cart online and then submit it right there, and that information will automatically be uploaded. And we've had, Don's already had at least one uh, customer who won't be available during that time frame uh, make contact and we've, we've worked with them to, to try to get that done uh, so that we can make sure that we register what they're wanting to have for a cart size even though they're, they're not available during that three week time frame. Right. I'd like to bring, since you brought it up, for those that are listening, um, if, you're, if, you wanna, if you're anxious and you wanna get it done, go online and get it done and it'll be done and done. Uh, that's a good question. I guess the next question in that vein, I've been around the world enough to know that there's going to be errors. What about the $35 fee if something gets done wrong? My Someone can show us that there's an error. My guess is that if there was an error made on our part, we'll change that out. But if there's an error, if a person chooses, it's really important to remember if you choose a cart and then for whatever reason that cart doesn't fit what your initial choosing was that there will be a $35 fee that's why we're encouraging a lot of people even if you're gonna go out and get that one trash tag a month you're gonna end up paying more than you would if you just chose a 65 gallon cart so um, if somebody chooses a cart and that's the cart that's dropped off and then three months later they want to go to a different cart then, then they would pay that fee but if for example they chose a 35 gallon cart but we put a 65 gallon cart in their driveway then I would assume that we'll take care of it but ordering the wrong cart, that's not a mistake. That's just no, bad I'm judgment. No, I'm not saying ordering. I, yeah, I'm right saying on. if there's right a on. mistake on the city's part, I, I'm sure we'll get that taken care of. 
in that vein, I guess I, I'm not understanding why we're having the uh, stickers. What? Tell me about that. So the idea of the trash tag, and you guys can correct me if they're wrong, but in my line of thinking, the, the idea of the trash tag is to give somebody the opportunity to have additional trash picked up that won't necessarily fit in their cart, i.e. if there's a graduation party and they produce more trash through, during that one particular week, maybe during or around Christmas time after somebody opens a lot of packages, if they fill their container but they have an additional trash bag, they don't have to hoard that bag or hold on to it to the next week, they'll be able to, to go out and get the one-time trash tag, uh, put it on that bag so that it's collected. So. Um, I've got a lady that lives right next to me, and that's the only time she's going to need tags is Christmas. She's <coughs> like, I'm fine with my trash can. I said, then stick with it, and for Christmas, you can get your trash tags. So yeah. just to make I, it I've better. never bought one of those tags in all the years. Wish I because you're good that way, Leon. Well, I recycle. God bless you. Uh, next <coughs> question, I, had, I, I asked about this. I'm kind of confused. What happens to the citywide cleanup and the yard waste cleanup and all of this? We yeah. haven't necessarily had that conversation yet. Um, that's something that we'll discuss as the year goes by. There's a lot of information that Don's still collecting, um, but there's the potential where that's going to change. <clears throat> to what, we don't know, we'd be speculating. What the, what the bigger trash cans are supposed to do is give us an idea of how, how important the spring cleanup is going to be, and maybe we can kind of cut that back or something. But again, if you, well, I guess if you my, caught the my last- My question there on, on that, I'm a gardener. About half my yard is in some sort of flower bed or That's true. vegetable garden. You can drive by there and see for yourself. Uh, at the end of the year, there's quite a bit of, of yard waste. I can't imagine trying to put all that, for instance, in a 65 gallon can. I think it'd break it. The, well, the weight, the weight of that well, stuff would that's be not for, That's not for yard waste, though. Okay. So as we're still sticking with the same plan with, uh, I would imagine, you can check with Don, but for yard waste, I thought we were still doing it with the, with the bag. Well, well, I assume that one thing that has been done in the past, the, you could use your, if you had a 30-gallon container out there that you are putting your bag. And that's into, what I use. You could that. put your yard waste into that, on, that for pickup the next day, and that's been allowed in the past. You're not looking to have that occur as we move forward, are you, Don? As we move forward with the new containers, you're going to have, I mean, everyone's going to be forced to go in to Lowe's or wherever that, and buy the, the contain, the, those $2 bags. bags. So you want $2 bags. Well, what is, what are those cost? That's not $2. It's like five for $2. Five for two. Yeah. But Don, it, the, does the potential exist where perhaps we move to a program that does allow people to use the larger containers that we issue? So for example, if we collect trash on Tuesday, and then we're going to do yard waste pickup on a Wednesday, they could fill it. I know we that was mentioned at one point in time. We never really came to a complete conclusion as to how we were going to move forward with that. But I think we're kind of putting the cart before the horse on some of this stuff. Well, we're, we're talking about the, what we're paying for this, and, and, I, and I think yep. we, we need to know what it includes and what it doesn't include. Sure. I don't envision a change to the LEAF program, and that's what we're talking about, is we do three weeks of LEAF collection in the spring, seven weeks in the fall. Um, certainly during those time periods, people are raking their yard, and they're getting twigs and stuff, stuff like that. In the fall, they have garden plants that they uh, cut off or pull. Uh, we don't, I mean, all this material goes into the compost pile at the landfill. They've got a windrow turner that they uh, operate, turning the grass and the leaves. Certain size or certain types of material are gonna clog up that machine. So that's why we limit the wood or the twigs that we take to no bigger than one inch in diameter certainly don't want to be throwing big tomato plant root balls in there. Um, so I don't see the program changing. We still do, we do pick up uh, some garden plants that get pruned or prunings off of bushes that go into those yard waste bags. Uh, a former council wanted the leaf program to be, take place on the day after garbage is picked up so that the resident who didn't want to buy the paper yard waste bags could use their empty garbage can, which was empty the day before, put their yard waste or their leaves in that can, set it out at curb, regardless of whether they're curbside or alley pickup for garbage, 
and then we would have to empty those cans. I don't like that program because it takes more time to deal with the cans than just simply pick up a bag and throw it in the truck and go on. But that's what we do. We empty those 33 gallon cans of leaves, which may have grass that's been raked with the leaves, might have twigs in it, so on and so forth. We do not have a yard waste program per se. During the summer, people who want to cut their grass and collect it, and they can use a private hauler for that service. Now, the question was, has been asked, are we going to allow the use of these carts for pickup of leaves? Um, I have mixed feelings about it. Certainly, it saves the wear and tear on the guys picking it up. Um, I guess um, at this point in time, I would envision that that probably will occur if people are willing to wheel their cart out there and put grass or put leaves in it. But uh, I don't like the idea of the carts and I don't like the ideas of cans, but that's what it is. I hear you. I hear you. He's right there. You got anything else you want to? Well, so Leon, I guess, I guess I, when, when do we find out how this is, you know, when are you going to make a decision on this? Because right now what I do is I, when they do the leaf collection, I have five 33-gallon cans that you'll find out in front of my place. Don, would, would you see it? I mean, I guess um, it's something that we'll have to, to get a, a finite, more finite answer to. I don't necessarily have a problem with allowing people to use the carts, maintaining the same format, you know, picking it up one day, trash one day, picking up yard waste the next, using the larger cart if they get it. Or perhaps in your instance, Leon, you may keep some of your 35 gallon cans that you've got now, and we would continue to allow to have those used for yard waste only, not, not for trash, but just for yard waste. I mean, at a worst case scenario, do you see any reason why we wouldn't be able to continue to move towards that type of program? No, I mean, we're already there right now, essentially. No. Okay. All right. Not unless I get my way. <laughs> I mean, one of, Don's, one of Don's concerns with the leaf pickup program, you're, this using the carts is going to create, it's, it's going to slow down pickup times uh, from what the, the current system is. And as you get into those special weeks, those are the those are the hardest, the, the highest strain on the department for making sure that they can get the everything accomplished. And using those 30 gallon containers to pick up leaves doesn't help that process. No. And that's that's one of the things they're already going to be stressed on time, especially this. This first year, year in particular, this will be our first year of doing this program and. As with any new program, there's a learning out bugs, curve. Man. <clears throat> there's a learning curve, so it's going to be very, very difficult this fall. We're going to ask for your patience, Leon. We're going to need your patience, Leon. What if I don't have any? Well, we're going to ask you to buy some, but they're selling some real cheap across the river. One thing I'll tell you, Leon, is, is we're definitely going to do everything we can to try and make that that program as convenient <clears throat> um, and as efficient, not only for the city but also for the homeowner. So. We're not going to leave you high and dry. We're not going to tell you. Well, that my no my concern there is, back. is, we we went to this leaf collection and, and yard waste collection, so people didn't right. burn. Yeah, I I have respiratory issues. I appreciate the stuff being picked up rather than burned right. and, and making the whole town stench. Mm -hmm. Sure, that, that's all I have. Mr. Shahan, you've always you never let me down, man. I appreciate you. Anybody else from the audience? Questions or concerns? All right then. Council, are we good? Yes. Yeah. Let's vote. I'm good. Wilson? Aye. Billups? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Brinker? Aye. Okay. Your Honor, have Mr. Rest. Mr. Billups, enjoy your vacation. All right, thank you, guys. Thank Take you, sir. Care and uh, everybody, uh, everybody say an extra blessing for our firefighters and the excellent work they did over the weekend. I'm sorry. A lot town for one weekend. Look what happened. That's all right. I'll Enjoy be your, back. There you go. Enjoy yourself. We'll see you when you get back. Be safe. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I have a resolution awarding contract for the 2018 Central and Washington Bridge repairs. Second. Second. Mr. Mack. Good. good evening. Uh, the resolution in front of you would award contract to Brandt Construction in the amount of $297,818 for 
um, some maintenance type work on the Central Avenue Bridge. Uh, those include some retaining wall work, bridge abutment gap uh, fixes, and then some drainage issues that are caused by uh, not allowing the water to flow off, which ultimately has caused us some issues for, uh, for soil erosion around the wing walls. Um, the, the budgeted amount that we have is 350000 With the engineering costs, it takes us over the budgeted amount of 352000 uh, we were using uh, TIF revenue bonds to pay for this project. Um, the initial plan was done by Stanley Consultants to be done over the next several years. Um, seeing that we have the bids in front of us uh, all at once, one time, um, I recommend awarding contract for the full amount to do all the work at one time. Well said. You're, uh, you're going to have a most likely, depending on how the contract works out, a shortfall on there that will get covered by road use road use tax or this our general funds that we've already borrowed for street improvements. Correct. Um, you also already know that you have one change order you're going to be at least looking at to address. On the, <coughs> the eastern uh, spur of it has some bridge deck issues that we need to take a look at. Uh, what was what's the shortfall expected to be? About a thousand dollars. I mean and this is part of is one of the things you borrowed this last year, our, our street overlay program had a, about a million that you had borrowed, and your main project out of there was significantly below that. Yeah, the $1.4 million that we have for geo-bonded road work, uh, we, the asphalt project that you're seeing on Flint Hills and Shields is about a $600,000 project. Um, we had planned on doing some extra concrete work to spend the full amount. Uh, but after we got Agency Street East come in over bid, um, we were a little guarded on trying to, to do that project on top of it. So we have some funding available to, do, to take care of the shortfall. And then also, like, Agency was a little bit over bid. We have some flexibility as well. Out of road use tax and has funds available to make it happen. And we don't want a project like this to get short right. in right. terms right. of the work that gets done. So yeah. Otherwise, we're going to end up fixing it again. Yeah. Sounds good to me. The questions or concerns to the audience? <laughs> That's my dude, man. Leon Cheyenne, 1821 Mount Pleasant Street. I, I promise you for the rest of these resolutions, I won't bother you. <laughs> no bother, my friend. What's up? Um, we're still paying on this bridge, as far as I know. And we're having to do what I would consider major repairs. This bridge originally cost a million and a half. The railroad anted up for part of it, and we borrowed the rest. This kind of bridge wasn't really meant for what it's being used for. Uh, my understanding, if my memory is correct, uh, along the Missouri River over a levee and a railroad right of way to cabins along the river much less traffic density than what this bridge is carrying. Um, you're talking about the abutments having a problem. As I came down here today, I looked on the northeast corner of that bridge, right in the intersection, there's a large crack opening up. I, I really think, I don't know how else to say this, tear that bridge down and make an intersection. You own the land across from it now, you can make a nice intersection so the railroad's happy. Uh, what we have now is, is a mess anyway. <coughs> but if you're going to keep spending money on this, I, that bridge is what, 10 <coughs> years old? No, it's older than that. It's not very much older than that. I'm not sure, but it's, it's, older, yeah. it's older than that. It's, uh, it's probably 15 years old. It's, it's got to be. It's got to be. Yeah, it's got to yeah, be. Yeah, but I hear what you're saying. No, I, you know, I hear what you're saying. It's a 15 year old bridge. I hear what you're saying. And, and you look at that compared to the Mount Pleasant Street viaduct, and I have no special interest there. I hear what you're uh, saying. Tear it down. I don't, I don't hear that, but I, I understand where you're coming from. I hear what uh, you're saying. This, the bridge that you have there is going to be a constant headache. We're going to keep doing this and keep doing this. Um, uh, that that crack isn't going to go away, and I don't know how you fix that. Because the deck is the supporting structure on that bridge. It, it's not like the viaduct on Mount Pleasant Street where you have steel girders. If that if that deck fails, the bridge fails, and it looks like it's failing to me. I, I think we really need to consider: Do we want to keep throwing money at that bridge? You know, you're talking 
a bridge, it's still, whether it's 10 years or 15 years old, we're spending 20% of what we paid for the bridge to fix it. And we've had other repairs before this. Don't throw good money after bad. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Anybody else from the audience? And just to, I just want to uh, say this to you. Um, you know, you know that bridge is here, and uh, we're going to have to maintain that bridge. And, and I understand where you're coming from, and, and maybe that's something that needs to be looked at down the road. But if it's here, if it's in the house, we've got to maintain it, whether we like it or not. Everybody, I'm sure you got a room in your house that you don't like, but you're going to maintain it because it's part of the house. So we're still going to maintain that bridge. But again, I understand where you're coming from. I understand too, Leon. Um, I think that now that that building's gone, uh, Murray Ironworks, that we'll probably have the ability to do something else in the future. But once the bridge is there, it's there. So I just don't see the ability to remove it at this point. Okay. Council, we good? Yes. Kathleen, let's vote. Wilson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Ranker? Aye. Your Honor, I have a resolution awarding contract for the 2018 Tama Building Permeable Alley. Second. Mr. Mack. Um, if you remember our discussion last week, uh, my recommendation based on, at that point, the current status of the Tama Building project and the alleyway that they were preparing to construct, I recommended not awarding contract to, to, to FI Excavating, I believe it was the uh, low bid. Uh, based on the grant award and the time frame that it needed to be executed by and leaving us out to, you know, out to dry as far as financially it goes if they weren't to have it completed. Now, given the current status, I, I would definitely not echo the same concerns. Thank you, sir. Questions or concerns from the audience? Council? I think we need to discuss this, do we? No. Kathleen? Wilson? No. McCampbell? No. Rinker? No. Okay. Your Honor, I have a resolution acknowledging emergency nature of angular arch sewer repair work at Front and Valley Street. Your second. Second. Uh, in front of you is a resolution um, acknowledging, the, per our purchasing policy, uh, anytime we, we have the ability to uh, go out and fix issues, infrastructure, for instance, the 8th sewer. Eight, South 8th Street sewer issue, uh, this issue that, that become an emergency that need to be tackled uh, immediately rather than have to wait to go through council action. Um, what this resolution does is acknowledge uh, from a, a letter from a licensed engineer who is here uh, that this is an emergency uh, fix, the things that we've done so far. Uh, we also have an action item on there to award contract to, f to make the permanent fix for this. Um, we just Normally, in an emergency case, we probably wouldn't have this come through council, uh, but the timing of it worked with the way that the council meetings were set up, so we, would, we wanted it to come through council. So all this resolution does is give the authorization for us to function in an emergency setting. Okay. Questions or concerns from the audience? I see none. Council? I think I just got some questions on the Klinger estimate. Um, 324000 that was the number you didn't have last week that you have this week, right? And is that for the entire repair, or is that just the emergency repairs? I left that sheet on the back. I have my numbers there. That's for what was bid. That was for those the engine. The, yeah, the next item is we'll have a little bit more better okay. out on this. So at, to date, we have have a pay request of one hundred and six thousand dollars. Uh, 400 and change, and then an estimate of $31,858.75 of what we consider the emergency repair. Um, the, the rest of it was bid out, and I have those numbers. We did that earlier today. Mm -hmm. um, so we are at about $140,000 of emergency type repair that we've performed on top for, of. For the first phase. For the first phase of, of this project. We also have engineering fees associated with that. Uh, that we have, uh, I think, a $16,000 invoice for. Okay. So um, we'll get into the bidded number here in the next action item. Um, as far as the emergency stuff goes, in the, I, I noticed the tracks were being removed down there, and they were they were moving a portion of the new track over, putting in a new track. Is that Are we taking care of that? Does the short line take care of that? Right or now, the, the short line the financial is... Financial responsibility. Right now, there? the short line is 
taking care of that. Um, they've coordinated all efforts on that. That's okay. still going to be something that we'll have a, have to have a discussion with the short line about where what's where, the appropriate breakdown. The, the one gap that I could see where we maybe have some responsibility in is the mobilization or demobilization of when they had tracks set up just east of of the area and then after some conversation with contractors we had to actually excavate that area that's some of the dollar figures that you're seeing and and sure that in in mr bros could could testify what what's being done uh, we had to actually shore that up so they actually removed some of the track and then we're then they had to put it back down so for that amount i could see us definitely having some responsibility in covering i don't know what that monetary at, figure at the is. same time this is still something that we have to go through some further evaluation to see what what's the appropriate breakdown of who, what's for whose so responsibility no and what, who's those numbers aren't going to be included in your numbers tonight <coughs> no. No. correct and based off of the look of those machines they were probably pretty expensive there's also some work that that Brandt is doing I think for their mainline stretches that's included so we when we get into that conversation with the railroad we're gonna need to see a breakdown of what was actually done and spent Good. for this additional spur versus what was being done for regular maintenance that they had called in the answer to that though is is you think about we've spent a hundred and fifty thousand already and you have before you after this this next piece is depending on the level of work needing to be done from 250 to 350 uh, on top of that and the the railroad side the kind of work that that they're doing the initial just the ballpark that we heard was a 200 200 200,000 potentially that they're spending the overall cost for everyone involved is pretty high I mean, you're close to 700,000 six six fifty all right nothing cheap any other questions from the audience I see none council we're good yeah. Kathleen Wilson aye McCampbell aye Rinker aye Number five. Your Honor, I have a resolution awarding contract for the 2018 Front Street Hawkeye Arch Sewer Repair. Second. Mr. Mack. As I said earlier, we, we uh, received bids this morning at uh, 10 o'clock, or 11 o'clock, rather. Um, I don't know exactly what resolution you've given them, Kathleen, just the one that I have here, the blank one. Right. You don't have the contractor name or the dollar figure? They have a motion to amend. Oh, they do. Okay. Uh, so we had one bidder this morning uh, where the base bid came in at $247,700, uh, which is uh, about $30,000 over the original estimate. Uh, after speaking with Mr. Bross, I think a lot, of, a lot of the increase is the risk that goes with it and the ability to dewater and to uh, pull out the stop blocks when they're, when they're doing it, and then kind of the unknown of what is the arch sewer's integrity um, and getting down in there. There was also two base or two alternate bids. Alternate bid number one is uh, a design and dollar figures to work on the northern chamber where we don't know if there's any damage, but as we th take things apart, we don't want to get into a spot where we don't have any ability or plans or, or bidded numbers on correcting that either. Uh, so that's what alternate number one is. And then alternate number two is a mobilization, demobilization. So uh, taking out the stop blocks at the end of the Hawkeye sewer so that we can, when we can dewater, um, should we have high water levels or a lot of rain uh, in the future, uh, that, that is quite a bit of storm water coming down there from, from the overall city, uh, the basin. Um, so in the resolution, I, I believe Kathleen has changed it, allowing uh, the city manager to authorize those two alternates should they be necessary during construction rather than have to come back to council. Uh, to award those back out and mr bross is here he can talk about maybe the construction and the the design of what we're doing here mr bross can you can you come up for a second please can you give us the uh the five dollar scoop on that yeah so i got called on uh, july 16th uh, by nick mcgregor and uh, void was discovered underneath the railroad tracks um, we discussed at that time, due to the urgency of the railroad track safety there, uh, that we would um, 
work with a local contractor. We got prices from two contractors and work with the local contractor to put a temporary patch in there to allow the train to, to mobilize. At the same time, uh, that occurred on uh, July 17th, and at the same time, we began to design a more permanent fix uh, for what we thought was and we think is the south barrel collapse there. So what, what is there, there's two, two barrels. One, the south one is a 10-foot diameter barrel, which we believe is the original construction, and then a later construction of 12-foot barrels on the north side, and there's a significant blockage in that 10-foot barrel on the south side under where the track was. So we, we devised a plan, a 10-step plan, to do a permanent fix, which required us to drive sheet pile on the north and south sides of that uh, area that you see there. So if you look at this picture, this is just kind of a, a cartoon of it, but the front streets on the left, north is up, Memorial Auditorium is up to the upper right, you don't see that, and the railroad track is in the center. You see a pedestrian crossing above, uh, below the lower, or the upper box part there, and, and basically this is right in the drive to the South Parking Lot Memorial Auditorium and right under the track. And so what we, what our part, I won't go through all the 10 steps, it's kind of complicated, but we needed to get the track out of the way so we could fix the sewer safely. So we've, we've accomplished um, basically the, the east half, the dark blue, we've got a place there where we're, we've stabilized the sewer um, and we've, we've got the track moved onto that. We did find damage, severe deterioration there. We're able to cover that. And then we're currently working on the blue rectangle on the left side, which would be the west, what we call the west bulkhead, and that'll be done this week. Then the, the portion in yellow is the part that's the permanent repair, which is the base bid. And that'll be to put a, a concrete box there, and then the railroad track will be put back where it belongs. What, what about the, uh, what about the, the end that's, that's 12 foot? Uh, we don't know much about about what we, we uncovered it on the east side under that blue rectangle on the right we uncovered it it seems to be in pretty good condition we didn't detect damage there as much as we did on the 10 foot one how far, how long did that run how far up into the city does that come um, yeah it goes back past fifth street which is dual chamber and then it becomes one sewer going back up along the railroad tracks of the hawkeye so and it, we, it was. Oh, we think the ten, ten, not all the way up there, but we think the ten foot one was built earlier than the twelve foot, based on the way it's constructed. Early nineteen hundreds, early eighteen hundreds. Eighteen hundreds, yeah. What's the overall condition of that chamber? Do we have the ability to inspect that? It's not currently safe, and hasn't been accessible from the riverside. Okay. Uh, and I don't. We don't have any records that we know of of that portion. Um, that 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 is something that needs to be done. It's Does it make sense once we open this up to at least put something in it, whether it's a camera and run it up and see, try to get the an last, idea? Of the last time we were in it was when we did some sewer separation work. So we had sewer laterals that were in there, and so there's shock created in there. So we had people in there not that long ago. Um, so and there how, has been some work in there. How far up? Um, I don't know how far east it goes. Whenever it turns and goes south to the Market Street lift station. Well, it runs all the way to the river, doesn't it? Not the sanitary, it doesn't. No, the, sanitary the storm does. Lost. The storm, the, those, those arches the, run all the way out to the river. I'm talking about the 10-foot chamber we're in right Correct. now. Correct. Yes, that runs all the way to the river. When was the last time we inspected that portion with that chamber? We had anybody in there? Between there and the river, I have no idea. The problem is it's full of water most of the time. But that's my question is, does this make sense to try and hold off to putting the cap back on to to waiting until we can get to a point where we can at least get something in there to see what this looks like. And, and the reason I ask is if the integrity here is already compromised, where's the next spot going to be? Is it going to be at an intersection um, halfway up into town, or is it going to be in that same area? It, Let me explain the situation of the, the emergency nature of it. So the 10-foot the barrel, it's partially collapsed it has a blockage in it yeah, no no, no I understand so, that. so in order to, to even get an inspection done we need to selectively demolish that barrel clean out that get blockage that out there. put the box back in place and put it all back together okay then certainly the inspection can occur okay from the riverside you 
or through a manhole on valley or, or whatever there are other ways to get into it okay yeah All right. That's it, at certain levels and up until recently you would have had to have a diver in there as the water levels were so high now okay. they, they are declining to a point where it is going to be better Crazy. seasonally <clears throat> but we have access to it from other points yeah we good? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any questions from the audience? I want to make sure I didn't forget anybody. All right. Let's vote. You need a motion oh, to amend. Thank I you. need. Yeah. Yep. Thank sorry. You. I have a motion uh, to amend that the resolution awarding contract for the 2018 Front Street Hawkeye Arch sewer repair amended by added the following language, whereas the bid package included the base bid alternate alternate bid number one and alternate bid number two. Now it be resolved upon recommendation of the assistant city manager for public works, the contract for the base bid be awarded to Carly Nelson Company, Burlington, Iowa, in the amount of 247,700. Ooh, 247,700. <laughs> 247,700. <laughs> I do that all wow. the time. Uh, <coughs> be it further resolved that the alternate bids number one in the amount of 100. $24,900 and number two in the amount of $6,025 yeah, be authorized to the by the city manager upon necessity during construction. Second. Moved in second. Let's uh, take it to vote. Wilson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Brinker? Aye. Let's vote again as amended. Wilson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Brinker? Aye. Okay, moving right along, number six. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the mayor to sign our town grant application through National Endowment for the Arts. Second. I have to say, uh, Mr. Tislin. This is a grant uh, again through the National Endowment for the Arts uh, for a design um, grant program, creative placemaking program for uh, Nancy Nafee Park, uh, intended to uh, be able to hire a consulting firm on the work on park redesign um, utilizing creative placemaking techniques and including creation or installation of public art uh, this park we've had discussions and over the past year on trying to make it more effective and efficient use of space uh, especially with uh, a lot of the work that's gone on downtown yes. uh, additional residents and uh, businesses downtown um, while maintaining the character of the park also uh, trying to add more art to it and make it a more usable and functional space so uh, this grant would help in uh, uh, selecting a consultant for design, getting some uh, design uh, drawings, as well as uh, creation and installation of public art, uh, whether that be through some of the amenities at the park or uh, otherwise. It is a grant due uh, here in August. Um, earliest beginning date for the uh, performance of the grant would be July 1, 2019. So an FY20 uh, does have a 12,500 uh, local match, as well as a uh, uh, working with the art center on matching that amount to uh, solidify the the local match for this project. Okay. Questions or concerns from the audience? <clears throat> Good. You're going to love it. Council. Good. Kathleen. Wilson. Aye. McCampbell. Aye. Rinker. Aye. Well done. Number seven. Your Honor, I have a resolution approving the final plat of Benedict Acres subdivision. Second. Mr. Tesla. This is a two-lot subdivision loca located in uh, the county, uh, the two-mile growth area of the city of Burlington, uh, where we have subdivision review. Um, essentially uh, splitting up uh, the lot so that there's a, a homestead on each uh, separate lot. Um, currently, there's a uh, well, home on a lot that uh, would be included in lot two, and then this portion of the um, structures and remaining land would be in lot one. So um, kind of taking two existing lots, uh, reconfiguring them and uh, making them into two larger lots that have uh, homes and then uh, the adjacent land. Questions on, uh, or concerns from the audience? I see none. Even Leon's not even moving on this one. You know this is a go. Council? Good. We're good. Kathleen? Wilson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Rinker? Aye. Number 
Gregory. Your Honor, I have a resolution approving contract with Southeast Iowa Regional Planning Commission for CEBG and SRF Loan Administration. Second. Mr. Mack. Uh, this resolution would approve a contract with uh, Southeast Iowa Regional Planning to do CDGB administration and SRF loan uh, application and then at administration. Um, with the locust separation project, a $5.3 million uh, sewer separation effort for, to meet our consent order, we received uh, $600,000 in CDGB uh, block grant money to, to do that work. Well, with that comes a lot of requirements, uh, Davis-Bacon, uh, prevailing wage reporting. Uh, the, the contract is $30,000 to do CDGB uh, contract or uh, to do requirements for that uh, and then 5,000 for SRF loan preparation uh, currently they are they're working on uh, environmental um, work so that we can go out to bid sometime later this fall um, we need to do this in order to to receive the funds and use these funds for uh, the separation efforts so I recommend approval questions from the audience mr. Hopkins I see none council are we required to have a loan administrator? Are we are we on this deal? Yeah. Mr. Mack, you want to? Loan administration or for CDGB, we're required to have CDGB administration. Okay. And the the SRF is more for loan preparation, and the hoops you have to well, jump. Well, CDBG to get that. was the large. I mean, that's the. It's the block grant. But that's the thirty thousand. Mm, yes, correct. So that okay. So we're required to have somebody administer this. Correct. Okay. You have to have some. I mean, you can have someone who does that in house. Uh, a lot of this, but it is pretty difficult. You have to have We're not. Certified we are too. not set up to do this. I mean, most projects that I've been involved with have either had a firm like Klingner doing it as they're doing the project, or having Southeast Iowa. Chuck Norris. Uh, Mike Norris, Regional Planning. <laughs> Mary can call me Chuck, though. Uh, on the CDBG, the state of Iowa requires a certain uh, amount of annual training to administer a project. Uh, we do this on behalf of our four county communities in four counties in southeast Iowa. Uh, the SRF, uh, we're also, uh, there's an, an environmental uh, compliance component to both of these, and so we're actually doing that as well, as well as all of the uh, uh, loan draws at, at the time they need to be done, um, all of the file preparation uh, and the file closeout. So we're keeping track of all the rules and keeping the city in compliance with both the loan and the grant. Okay. Right Thanks. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, any other questions from the audience? We're good. Council? Good. Kathleen? Wilson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Rinker? Aye. Number nine. Your Honor, I have a resolution approving contract with Southeast Iowa Regional Planning Commission for assistance in, uh, with consult in uh, selection process for the Tiger Grant. Second. Thank you. Mr. Mack. Uh, this resolution would award contract to Southeast Iowa Regional Planning in the amount of $3,000 to help uh, the city uh, prepare the uh, RFQ process, the, the consultant selection process for the Tiger Grant. Um, because it is federal dollars, we have requirements to use the selection process. That selection process is about a 50-page application of, of different hoops to jump through. My staff, unfortunately, doesn't have the time to do this. Um, uh, you know, regional planning has a lot of experience with DOT forms, and so my, my recommendation is to have them help us uh, with this preparation. Right on. Questions or concerns from the audience? I see none. Council? I'm good with that. Good. Kathleen? Wilson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Rinker? Aye. Okay. Man. Your Honor, I have a resolution waiving the building permit fees for the Southeast Iowa Housing Inc. project at 425 Hageman Avenue. Second. Evident second. This was a request by Housing Inc. to waive the, the permit fees at 425 Hageman. Uh, this is a lot that they purchased from the City of Burlington. There were some requirements or conditions on the property as far as uh, sale for owner-occupied and income requirements for that uh, purchase. Um, they are using a SEC building trades program as well um, and uh, trying to stabilize this area through the construction of a new home. Uh, fees are estimated up to uh, $1,500 uh, factoring in plumbing and electric building permit fees. 15 well waived. Any questions or concerns from the audience? I see none. Council? Good. Good. And Kathleen? Wilson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Brinker? Aye. Okay. Number 11. 
I don't have a resolution approving permanent and temporary easements with Lamont Limited along Bluff Road for construction of the Flint River Trail. Second. Lincoln second. Mr. Tisson? Uh, this we just uh, received last week. We've been uh, working with Lamont over the last five plus months on um, easement for this property. We previously uh, received an easement from uh, the property owner to the uh, South Iowa International Investments uh, for construction of the trail. Uh, this easement does uh, secure permanent easement. Uh, I believe it's around four to six feet in width adjacent to the right of way uh, for future trail construction. Uh, this entire portion would, is not a uh, part of the project as far as uh, constructing a trail on it at this time. Um, we are looking to uh, make some improvements in this area if we can uh, keep our contractor on site, but uh, we need this easement before we can do anything, uh, whether it's improvements to the property, Lamont's property, or uh, for a trail. And um, so we're still working through that. But uh, just for reference, this area is the, the portion in, adjacent to Lamont's property, just uh, to the southeast of 8th Street on Bluff Road. Good. Questions or concerns from the audience? Council? Let's get her done. Kathleen? Wilson? Aye. McCampbell? Yes. Rinker? Aye. Okay. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the filing of an application for for State of Iowa Revitalize Iowa Sound Economy Rise funds for a new roadway in the Flint Ridge Business Park. Second. Second. Mr. Shahan. <coughs> Anytime I, I see a grant like this, I know there's usually a match that we have to do. So uh, I, I'd like to know how much money we're really talking about there. This is a 50% uh, match on it. So the overall, what was the projected cost on this? Our 50% matches 570. About 600,000. And that was something that it was part of, this was part of our CIP. It was, I think, a FY20, so we've moved it forward a year, but it, it does have a match that's tied to it. It builds a road into the industrial park. This is something that had come originally as a request from uh, the chamber to help with the development of that area, but it's also a benefit. The, the next piece of it would, after, after doing this portion, there would be a, a secondary piece that would connect from South Broadway down to where that roadway is. Um, so, Eric, what's the, the project? So the RISE project would connect West Burlington Avenue back to the west at the south end of Broadway, but then that future connection would be extending Broadway down to this portion. And as that gets done, that helps flow. I mean, I don't know how much of a fan you are of the outdoor recplex, no. but for the purpose of it, it that's part of the, the purpose of uh, getting it accomplished too but i mean originally when it did come to the city as it was as a request from the chamber in terms of how do we help this to be more accessible and developable long term for the remaining lots a gift that keeps on giving thank you mr shahan you never disappoint anybody else from the audience i see none you can't vote what's that Oh, we can't do anything good. until Annie's back. No, you can't. Annie's back, guys. Oh, man. Kathleen, let's vote. Wilson? Aye. McCampbell? Aye. Rinker? Aye. Okay. Uh, now we've come to the end. You guys have been fantastic tonight, even Leon. Is there anybody from the audience that has any comments, concerns they would like to address tonight? Mr. Hopkins, did you have something you want to address tonight? Okay, it's good to see you. Mr. Downtown? Uh, Steve Freebird, Executive Director of Downtown Partners. I just wanted to say a few things about uh, what we all dealt with downtown this weekend with the team of project. Uh, first and foremost, uh, thanks to Chief Trexel and his department, all the other departments who, who work so hard to keep that uh, blaze under control. Uh, we. I don't think uh, the community can thank you enough for, for all the work that you do. Here, here. Um, 
you know, this is, this is heartbreaking loss. Uh, there were a lot of people counting on moving uh, their apartments into that building, uh, that pair of buildings, uh, moving their businesses in. Um, so, you know, we feel their disappointment. Uh, we're, we're very glad that no one was hurt. You know, there were a few small injuries, but uh, it could have been so much, much worse. Um, at the end of the day, we're not losing uh, any apartments that were already on board. We're not losing any businesses that are already moved in. Uh, Downtown Partners is working with uh, a number of the affected businesses uh, in the area, um, trying to help them uh, in terms of whether they need to relocate temporarily, uh, giving them some, some suggestions there. Um, a number of those businesses suffered some water damage, so they are working on uh, getting those places back up. I know Alliant Energy has been working uh, all day today to get uh, power reestablished on the, on, uh, the 300 block of, of North 4th Street. Uh, so we appreciate all those efforts being done. Um, this, this is a setback, there's no question, but um, at the end of the day, we have lots of great things happening in our downtown. And uh, I, this is um, not really going to uh, slow the progress, it's certainly not gonna stop the progress of the revitalization that we've seen. Um, I'm a building hugger, I hate to lose historic buildings, we've lost too many of them. Every one of them we lose uh, makes the remaining ones even more precious. So, uh, you know, going forward, uh, we'd definitely like to work with the city on uh, doing everything we can to, to maintain the historic uh, downtown that we have left. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> um, so uh, thanks to everyone for, for, for your help. It's, it's been very um, gratifying to see all the business owners reaching out to each other, offering help, offering suggestions. Um, I think things are going to be back, uh, if not to normal, but up and running pretty soon. Uh, we're working on plans for uh, temporary relocation of the farmer's market over the next few weeks. Uh, so, so I think that'll be happening. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a terrible thing. Um, we've had terrible fires before, uh, and we're going to have disasters again. This, this is going to happen again. Uh, nobody can stop it. And, uh, you can talk to the people in Marshalltown who have recently suffered a much more devastating loss than we have. Um, the best we can do is, is be as prepared ahead of time for the contingencies as we can uh, and to, to put our best foot forward uh, and move together uh, and um, look to uh, the future possibilities. Um, certainly Downtown Partners wants to see something uh, uh, on that site uh, that's worthy of that location and worthy of downtown. Uh, I know we have some, some meetings and some phone calls ahead of us, a lot of uh, work to be done in the coming weeks and months, but uh, uh, all is not lost. Stay tuned. I think we will see some good come out of this tragedy. Thanks Thank for stealing you. some Steve. of the stuff I was going to say, Steve. It <laughs> doesn't have the same effect. You did a lot better than me, but well said. Thank you, sir. One of the things that will go with that, uh, looking to have a place Grinnell Mutual is the insurance company that uh, is evaluating that loss and I know that probably have chief talk a little bit about what's going on they will be holding a meeting at, or wanting to get a meeting scheduled later this week uh, tentatively I mean I don't know if it's we don't have anything scheduled yet but later in the week probably up at the chamber uh, they've agreed to host us us doing that they want to be able to have a, an open house where, or forum where anybody who had a damage associated with this, whether it was a, a tenant uh, from the residential side, commercial side, whether it was a building owner, uh, losses associated with this, come and make, make their losses known to them So, in one coordinated spot. We don't have the, the time for that or the day, but it, they're looking to try to get that done later in this week, and we'll, we'll do our best We're working with uh, downtown partners to get information out uh, on that so that anybody who was potentially impacted by that will be able to be involved with that yeah. so just to fill you in a little bit about what happened today so uh, did a lot of on the investigation side today even though that's just barely getting started it's going to take a long time to complete the investigation but trying to figure out what we're going to do with the building and you know how much of downtown needs to be secured or blocked off and for how long so we've kind of got a good plan on where to go with that getting the electricity restored to the 300 block of uh, north fourth should happen tomorrow 
they're coming in tomorrow morning and uh, taking down a little bit of the building that they need to to make it safe for Alliance to get in there and get the power turned back on to that 400 blocks. That'll allow everybody to have their power restored. And then as far as what area is, is blocked off, we're looking for a fencing company, or they are, to fence off a large portion, but then allow the businesses on the, you know, across the street from the Still Taylor building to have the public be able to access those buildings again. So, I you know, like the art center in that part of Jefferson Street right there, they all were closed today. So, uh, if we could get if we could have got a fencing company in there today, they could have made that happen yet tonight. But we're having problems finding anybody that's not two weeks behind on mm -hmm. putting fencing. Yeah. So until then, you'll see police officers or firefighters down there keeping people away from the building and in a safe area. So. So quick couple quick questions. Mm -hmm. Where are we as far as the building goes structurally? <coughs> yeah. And so is there at all concern about its current condition coming down either on Third Street or Jefferson? Okay. So this afternoon the insurance company had a, a firm go in there and do an assessment. Okay. And they said it's gonna come down but not without help, meaning as it sits it should not fall down. They're saying it won't fall down. So that's where that is. All right. Um, earlier, we blocked off a lot of areas, and I got to thank Brian Bross. He came down. I asked him to. I didn't. And he uh, came down yesterday and again today just so I would know, hey, what? You know, what are we looking at here? Because it looked, the building still looks scary. I mean, it's half of it is down. You think, is the other half going to yeah. stay standing or not? So, uh, Thank Brian for doing that for us. So we got a good idea where to initially secure the area. Now they've went in there and done another assessment, and, and uh, that's what they're they're saying. So I don't know if we need to do any other assessment on our own of that building, safety wise. I think it kind of depends on what what goes forward, and we're going to have some conversations with the building owner as the week goes on too. Uh, between I, I think. Uh, Steve is going to be involved with that. We have some city staff that will be involved with that and just make sure we have communications. Um, we want to make sure that we protect the safety of the community too, but but we need to know where the, the building owner is on, on it too. So we'll work with them as much as we can to make sure that that's done and the building is addressed in a, in a safe, reasonable way. I know I posed the question to you yesterday, and I know what your answer was then, but after somebody's had an opportunity to look at it today, is any portion of what's standing is salvageable? I don't, I don't think so. Okay. I suppose if you were going to put enough money, you know, I don't think money-wise it would make sense. I, it, it is it's it, a wrap, yeah. unfortunately. You know, as, even as you go are going through this evaluation process, uh, insurance invest investigators are going to be in, getting into the building over the next couple of days. Are, are you going to get yeah. into the building? I'm not sure if I personally will or not. <laughs> I, mean, so, I mean, even as even I'm not even sure if the state fire marshal is going to go into the building in, yeah. in its current state. Good. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Chief, get some sleep tonight. Yeah. Any other comments from the audience? Mr. Sheehan. Kind of a question. Is there going to be any contingency that the city needs to have for resolving any demolition on the Tama building? So this is one where, as <coughs> again, to working with the owner of the property, we need to see how that works forward and with the insurance company. And we'll work through the state code provisions in terms of what we can and can't do for uh, establishing a, a side fund out of insurance to cover our costs. But I mean, that's part of, we'll, we'll do what we can to make sure that we're covering our response, our liability and responsibility on this too. So we're probably looking at some money. Uh, hopefully no. I mean, if we're able to work things out with the insurance company, the state code provisions, I, I think a mutual insurance company falls under this, but 10% of insurance proceeds are, are automatically set aside for, for demolition and cleanup by state statute. So that's one that we'll be working through with them. I don't know what the final ultimate cost will be on that. Uh, and we, don't, we just don't know what the steps are at this point. But 
it'll have to get addressed one way or another, and we are the 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 step of last resort, depending on how things work out. Okay. Thank you, sir. Audience, any other comments? I see none. You've all been fantastic tonight. Thank you for your participation, Mr. Tesla. Mm -hmm. Kathleen, I take it peanut butter and John have nothing to say. Uh, do want to give a uh, want to shout out to thanks to uh, all the groups. And I, I don't have all the names, I meant to write them down, but there are several groups of people and even families uh, that came together to try to uh, help and support the fire department. Um, it is truly appreciated. I just want to give a big thank you for that. I know that they appreciated all the groups. I just want to thank uh, the uh, other surrounding departments for the help. We are Des Moines County strong, and uh, nobody comes together in time of crisis like we do, and uh, nobody likes emergencies or uh, tragic situations. Uh, but as Mr. Freeford said earlier, that I was going to say. These things happen, and you can't stop it. We can't predict when it comes, but it is good to know that we have good support in, uh, in this town and surrounding areas. So I uh, just want to give a big shout out and thank you for that. Also to our own fire department, Burlington, um, you guys shine and uh, uh, they work hard and just give a big uh, thank you uh, to all of them on behalf of the city. They're appreciated. Also this weekend, on a good note, we did uh, participate in the Gus Macker three-on-three -three tournament downtown and um, the city had a three-on-three -three team uh, Jim Furneaux played uh, Annie played I was playing and uh, peanut butter played as well and we've got annihilated uh, by we played two games we played the both Midwest Magic team I don't know how that worked out that way but apparently they didn't want us to win anything but the, I think the first game the Midwest Magic Kobe's beat us by like eight or nine points something to that effect and then the second game I think the other Midwest Magic team beat us by like, I don't know, eight or 10 points, something to that effect. So, but the mayor came to play ball. It was everybody else that let me down. But I, I do just want to say that it was a fantastic, it was a phenomenal event. We had a lot of people out that day. Uh, the Midwest Magic, uh, they came hard and they got us and I actually owe them pizza. So that'll learn me forever making a wager like that again. I'm done with those days, but it was a phenomenal weekend. It's a shame that we had the the fire uh, to damper things, but um, the Gus Macker was awesome. I hope they, they do something like that again, and maybe we'll get an invite to play somewhere again in the future. You never know how that'll work out. I so, hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem. Um, yep, I have nothing. Just that um, to thank all of our emergency personnel for over the weekend. Um, we did have a good good time playing basketball. That was fun. Uh, and I guess just keep an eye out for updates on when and where the farmer's market is going to be Thursday. So we'll, I'll, we'll be looking out on Facebook, I guess, right? Yep. That's it. Uh, Councilor. Well, I just wanted to echo the same thing. My hat's off to all the emergency responders for this weekend. So if it wasn't for your guys' preparation and all the time that you put in when things aren't going on, that could have been significantly worse. There could have been... Uh, injuries or fatalities there could have been a lot more property that was damaged as a result of it so my hats off to you guys before before you speak I want to say this I read a post uh, normally I don't do this but I read a post on Facebook and I just thought it was it was awesome somebody said uh, people complain about the fire department when when nothing's going on but they said you know thank God that um, we have uh, the fire department that we do and even when nothing is going on um, it's how did they word that it was situations like this that kind of, you know, that make up for, you know, the times when there, when there is a down minute, because you guys are always hopping, but um, these big situations when we need you guys the most, and you guys showed up. So, anyways, other people are recognizing, even on Facebook, imagine that. So. Jim Furneaux, point guard, because you don't play defense. Point guard, that's correct. Um, our crew did a great job. Um, you have folks who volunteered for hours, and did came forward, step, stepped up both in the police department and the fire department to do uh, to serve whether they were on on shift or not. Um, we had multiple departments from the area who helped to make this help, whether it was being here directly or backfilling for other departments so that they those departments could be here and, and put equipment here. Um, tremendous support from the whole area, and, and just no uh, need to acknowledge how how much how much we depend on each other as, as a region. 
and just like to also express uh, how how much our community showed support for the fire department and uh, the stuff that you had brought down uh, was very beneficial you had folks who who uh, if you needed something to eat did you lack for food it was, it was pretty overwhelming. yeah and and and, Every, yeah. and I, I think I can't start making a list of names because I'm gonna leave people it's a super long list of people that came down there. Yesterday, yeah. and, to, and even today, people are showing up. We had businesses, we had man. just individuals coming forward and, and bringing stuff down. And and the guys really do enjoy that. It, it, it lets both the, 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 the PD had a lot of donuts down there this today, too. <laughs> so <laughs> they share, had, they're people, sharing. People donated a lot, and, and it, it means a lot when people are, especially in stressful situations, okay. you know that people care and, are, are, and have your back. Um, and that really demonstrates, you know, the vitality of, of, us, of Burlington as a whole community. So, much appreciated. Uh, radio, Wednesday. I can't. I guess it's you and me. Uh. No? It's me. Yeah, yeah, I just have to bring my grandson. Uh, yeah, we're, we're on, okay, all right. All right, and the only other thing I mentioned, just a reminder, uh, Linda has already signed up for uh, going to the league meeting. Uh, if any, it's uh, this year, September, I don't know what the dates are, uh, 12th to 14th, I don't know, it's the end of one of those weeks. Um, if any of you want to go to it, it's in Council Bluffs. Um, certainly let uh, Katie or myself know and we can get get you registered for it okay I will probably go but I'll have to look the calendar okay that's all I have you're good to go all right um, if there's nothing and you got yours you got your deal figured out didn't you sir okay all right if there's nothing else can I get a motion uh, motion closed second moved in second Kathleen let's vote Wilson aye Campbell? Yes, please. Drinker? Aye. This meeting is adjourned. Good night. Thank you.